It's like living on a terrace street. You know there are sort of four or five people in each house. You know on your terrace street there are probably 250 people. There's a fire that blazes right through the terraced housing and the police say there are 50 and you think, well, no, there's not. There's, I know Fred and Sheila at number 42 mm -hmm. and, and that's what these people feel. There, there must be a manifest of the people who are in the building. There will have been some people who came into the building. It was Ramadan, people were breaking fast, many Muslim families. And the truth is, in London, there would have also have been people who maybe shouldn't have been there, were homeless. So they know it's not 79, it's a lot more. You, Why have we not got a long David, list? So do you think the government is doing that on purpose? The authorities are doing that on purpose because they don't want to, as a suggestion, enrage people more? Or is it just the fact that as they are sifting through the remains of Grenfell Tower, which is just devastated, that they haven't been able to identify and find those people yet? All I can tell you is that when you lose someone and they're not declared dead, you look for them. You pray that they're, they're somewhere, they're walking somewhere. They, they, they got out and are in a daze, they fell asleep. And so there's a lot of people that are keeping that hope alive. That's why it's so important to help people come to some closure. Be very clear about the number, the approximate number, um, and, and help people move on. David, what do you think the number of dead is? Well, in the community, people think it's beyond 100, certainly. Um, this is one of the biggest tragedies to affect our country in generations. I say the word tragedy because I want to make it absolutely clear that it's my belief it's a crime. And that's the other part of this. You know, you see disasters in other countries. Um, people get rounded up. They get brought into a room. They get interviewed by the police. Documents are seized. Emails and computers are grabbed. There's a lot of kicking this into the public inquiry. It is a crime. We now find out this morning that people were poisoned. Yes. And I let me just say, I've got a building in my own constituency with the same cladding, recently built with the same cladding. What does it mean if you're living in that building in, 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 in a place like mine at the moment? What, what are you thinking? How, how do you get to sleep? What is, what is the situation? We just spoke to James Cleverley from uh, the Conservative Party uh, about sprinklers who said that back in 2013, after the Lacanal House fire, when the coroner had encouraged housing providers to consider retrofitting sprinklers, that the coroner had chosen their, chosen their words very carefully, that it wasn't a mandatory requirement for sprinklers. And that was the reason why there wasn't action on sprinklers, despite Labour trying to get emergency funding for that yesterday in the Queen's speech. In your constituency, what's going to happen with the retrofitting of sprinklers in tower blocks? Well, it, it, I listened to James and I thought it, I was surprised the lack of sensitivity that he was prepared to show. What we know is if there's a luxury flat penthouse that goes up, of course it's got sprinklers. Mm. Of course it's got, where are the fire extinguishers? The old fashioned things that are red that you put, you know, there is be either side in a corridor. Where are the hose pipes? Mm. Uh, the alarm in this building did not work. I know that for a fact. It was not working. And in your so, constituency, is all of that... I mean, do you put pressure on the housing providers and the council where you are to make sure that that is all being reviewed, consider, considered installation where you are? Or can you only rely on money from the government to do that? I've got a public meeting on Monday mm. for residents in my high towers, the fire brigade, the council... Officers will be there and they can answer and hear from the community. Absolutely. We saw that the um, Nicholas Holgate, who was the clerk of the Royal Borough of Kensington and Chelsea, has been um, forced to resign overnight. He didn't want to resign, but he's been forced to resign um, because of the handling of this in the aftermath. Mm -hmm. What's your reaction to that? Is he one of those people that you would like to see being questioned and, and rounded up and to get full understanding of, of his part in this? 
I think that this is a circumstance in which many people should consider their position and step aside. I happen to believe that the leader of the council should go. The political leadership has been poor and he should go. He has lost the faith of the people on the streets and you saw them in the package. That Nicholas Padgett Brown. That's Nicholas Padgett Brown. He ha I understand that he said he would step down, but he had a voter conference from all his fellow councillors saying that they didn't well, want him to. I, I, I think that they are out of touch with the community they're meant to represent. But I would also say it's not just about resignations. This is a crime. We need to live in a country where the police act. We've heard nothing about this criminal investigation. Mm. Although there is one going on. There's one going on, but let me, uh, let me be absolutely clear. Other crimes happen, you get a rolling commentary. Yeah. Who's been arrested? Who's been interviewed? What the police are up to? Why have they gone quiet?